正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 137. This prince wants Chen Yu through a tantrum for a while in Kaiyu Shui Yuan, but this time Chen Rikaiyu seemed to have an iron heart. No matter how much she begged, she remained indifferent and even got furious. And said that if she continued, then she will confine her. This time, Shen Yu really panicked, but Chen Rikaiyu was no longer bothered about her, so she was angry and anxious as she left Kaiyu Shui Yuan. However, she saw a few people coming out of Kaiyu Yuan, and the blue-clad young female who was leading was startled first before stepping forward to speak. Second older sister, Shen Yu, glanced at that female and replied, "N." Her attitude was, however, somewhat cold. This female was no other than Second Household's Shu daughter, Shen Dongling. Previously, Shen Dongling was pressed down by Ren Wanyan and would not leave the courtyard for the entire year. Thus, some servants did not even recognize her. But after Ren Wanyan's death, Shen Gui was diagnosed as unable to have any heirs. Shen Dongling became the only bloodline of the Second Household. But even so. Shen Yu still looked down on Shen Dongling's identity, even though she appeared to be amiable with her. Even if it was the same blood, it would not change the fact that Shen Dongling was a Shu daughter. If one were to say that Shen Yu is jealous and resentful of Shen Miao, then towards Shen Dongling, there was no hesitation with the contempt for her. However, Shen Dongling seemed to have not seen the cold look in her eyes and still said with a smile. I intend to spin a few silks to make silk cloth. And a few days back, when one spoke to Yi Niang about the matter, one was very excited about the patterns. Coincidentally, one had designed a few patterns. Does second older sister want some? No need, Shen Yu said. Even being treated coldly, Shen Dongling said with a good temper. Since it is as such, then it is all right. One originally was thinking to make a few for second older sister. Shen Yu was somewhat impatient at this moment. She was only worried about the matter of Chen Rikaiyu choosing a husband for her. So how would she think of other matters? Seeing Shen Dongling lowering her head and exposing a section of her fair neck, her heart slightly paused. She retracted her hand and carefully looked at Shen Dongling. There was only a difference of half a year of age between Shen Dongling and Shen Yu. If one were to speak of the original daughters of the Shen family, Shen Qing was magnanimous. Shen Yu was a refined, elegant beauty, and Shen Miao was a delicate beauty. The three of them also had the unique temperament of a Di daughter. Thus, Shen Dongling also had the similar unique frailness of a Shu daughter. Wan Yi Niang was previously the lead of a theater. And was a bit of a beauty when one was talking about looks. Shen Dongling did not look like Shen Gui, but was almost the exact same copy of how Wan Yi Niang looked like when she was young. Big eyes and sharp chin that were taken from Wan Yi Niang's looks. However, compared to those domineering Yi Niangs, Shen Dongling often lowered her eyes and would not snatch or create noises, putting her Yi Niang to shame. However, after a careful look to measure her up. She was a delicate girl who grew up and became a beautiful lady. Suddenly, Shen Yu's heart moved. She took the initiative to pull Shen Dongling's hand over and said with a smile, "I do not let you do it for me because I fear that it would tire you out. You are a young lady of the residence and not a embroidery lady of a workshop. What is with doing needlework all day long?" Shen Dongling was surprised for a moment and her face slightly reddened. Seemingly surprised by Shen Yu's sudden intimacy, she said favorably. Second older sister spoke too seriously. I have nothing to do on normal days, so Yi Niang told me to do some needlework. Thus, I did some. It does not hinder anything. Wan Yi Niang seemed to be suppressed by Ren Wan Yun too long, and even though the tide has turned now. What she loved to do was just staying in the courtyard to do embroidery. Shen Dongling apparently also followed her character. Seeing Shen Dongling this well behaved, the smile in Shen Yu's eyes got deeper. You should change your temperament. It is a good thing to be well behaved and like doing needlework. But which young lady is seen doing embroidery all day? Tomorrow I will be going to the jewelry shop to choose some jewelry. You should follow me. There are some new designs this year, and perhaps there would be some that you will fancy. If you saw anything you like, I will gift it to you. This, Shen Dongling waved her hands in panic, 
cannot, you are still being too courteous to me. Shen Yu feigned anger, you and me are after all closest sisters and if even you are so distant, then what is the point of being sisters? Shen Dongling was somewhat at a loss, and did not know how to continue Shen Yu's words. When Shen Yu saw this, she smiled gently and patted her shoulder. Third younger sister is still timid and has a character that make others heart ache. That will do, I still have some matters so one will not continue talking to you. Tomorrow one will let the maids go to Kai Yun Yu on to look for you, so that you can go to the jewelry shop with me. There was an indisputable tone in her words. Shen Dong Ling nodded her head and accepted. After Shen Yu and entourage left, Wu Mai who was a maid beside Shen Dong Ling said, what is this second young lady trying to do? At one time cold, at another time warm. Without any rhyme or reason, why would she thought about inviting young lady to the jewelry shop? Shen Yu naturally treated Shen Dong Ling blandly and to be that warm, it indeed aroused suspicion. This is her changing her tactics to fawn me. Shen Dong Ling looked at Shen Yu's fading figure and said with a gentle smile, most likely she felt that I am easy to bribe and want me to rely and trust her, so that in the future when she need me to help her to do something, it would be much easier. Wu Mai was astonished when she heard this, what can be done? This second young lady clearly has ill intentions and want to use young lady. Since young lady know about it, what can be done? There is no harm. Shen Dong Ling was somewhat happy, I am happy to help in it just like her gifting me jewelry. She want to gift good things to others, and I am not a saint so there is no logic in not accepting. She said, it is just that she is short-sighted. Shen Yu, who was walking towards Kaiyu Shui Yuan, was deep in thoughts as her mind was filled with the weak and obedient look of Shen Dongling. Both were sweet, fair and graceful ladies, both were at the prime age, both were daughters of the Shen family. But Shen Yu had an instinct that by winning Shen Dong Ling over, it would perhaps be of great use to her in the future. At this end Shen Yu was in total disorder and at another end, at the doors of the western courtyard, there was someone outside moving flowers. The bustle of activity was a bit lively and just as Shen Wan passed by the western courtyard's doors, he heard an old woman exclaiming, young lady. Be careful. Shin Wan looked over at the sound and saw a young female moving a heavy pot of flowers. Most likely the flower pot was too heavy and it almost knocked against her foot. The mama beside sighed in relief, and that female turned around and smiled at the mama with a smile like flower. Shin Wan's footsteps paused. The female was wearing a greenish blue top with a pink jaded skirt and has her hair up in a lily style with an agate hairpin. There was a thunderstorm last night and she was out and about early in the morning. She was not devastatingly beautiful that could cause the downfall of a country, and could only be considered as a graceful beauty. But the sunlight fell onto the sweat on her forehead and became dazzling like crystals. Because she was sweating, her face was a little flushed, making her become a kind of unspoken beauty. Everyone had the heart for beauties. Even though Shen Wan was not lustful, it did not mean that he would be indifferent towards beauties. There was only Chen Rikayu in his inner courtyard and even though he was in love dearly, as the days grew longer and as time passed, one would always feel a little bored. However, today upon seeing this beauty with vivid fragrance, Naturally one could not help but stop. It was like one was appreciating a painting or a poem. At this moment Shen Wan did not have any other emotions. He had always been not warm to matters between a male and female. That female seemed to have noticed that someone was watching her and turned over. Upon seeing Shen Wan, she paused in surprise before walking over. She walked to Shen Wan and was not at all shy or embarrassed but instead gracefully greeted third master. Shin Wan swept a glance at her and suddenly realized her identity, young lady Chang. Chang's AI King only saw Shen Wan once and that was when she just came to Shen residence, and that evening Chen Rikayu brought her to old Shen Furen. At night the light was fainter and since everyone was thinking about matters during the day, Shen Wan also did not notice Chang's AI King. He did not expect that upon closer look she was such a beauty of a rare temperament. Thinking that Chen Rikayu had good relations with Chang's AI King, his attitude became more cordial. What is young lady Chang doing? 
Xin Wan asked while smiling. Chang Zai King turned back and looked at the flower terrace. It was raining last night so many of the flower stalks were damaged by the rain, so I am bandaging them up. Bandage? Xin Wan felt it was somewhat novel and asked, how to bandage the flowers? Chang Zai King smiled gently. Third master can just take a look. Xin Wan walked over to the flower terrace to take a look and indeed saw that on those scattered branches, some were wrapped in fabric and some was coated in some medicine but all were placed and arranged tidily. Around them, there were some fabric and scissors, and one of the flower was folded into half but actually became connected. You are considerate. Xin Wan sighed, it is difficult to be willing to do it. With the thunderstorm last night, most of the flora and fauna would be injured and even Chen Rikayu, one who loved flowers, would also throw the flowers away after pitying for a bit. Destroyed flowers are not as good looking as before, and it would be annoying to keep praising it. One did not expect that Chang Zai King would be so attentive with these plants, and not only she did not throw them out, she still dressed them up. Plants also have life. Chang Zai King smiled as she spoke. Since one is one who loves flowers, one cannot forget one's original aspiration upon such encounters. Every living thing has a spirit, and one cannot be a person who say one thing but mean another. To speak about loving flora and fauna but cannot even do this little thing. Chang Zai King said candidly, moreover it is just doing some stuff, and this would delight ourselves so why not? Such a pleasing person. Xin Wan looked at Chang Zai King with eyes full of appreciation, young lady Chang is truly an elegant person. It is me who is vulgar, third master has praised exaggeratedly. Chang Zai King said jokingly, everyone is common people and I too have selfish motives. If I grew the flora and fauna well, one will feel more at peace staying in the residence, since one can still do some little things. Xin Wan smiled. Young Lady Chang has worried too much. Even if Young Lady Chang do not know how to grow anything, there will not be anyone in the Shen residence that will chase you away. Chang Zai King also smiled along, then many thanks to Third Master. She suddenly remembered something and looked at Shen Wen, speaking of which, I accidentally laid out a chess game yesterday and was unable to solve it. One initially wanted to look for Third Furin to help me take a look. But Third Furin seemed to be a bit busy today. One heard that Third Master is a chess expert. Is it possible to help give Zai King a pointer or two? After thinking again she smiled, I can make tea for Third Master. Perhaps Third Furin had told you that the tea I boil is very good to drink. Her conduct was natural and unrestrained and if one rejected her, it would seem that Xin Wan was rude. At the end she also used tea as a condition showing a little wit. Xin Wan thought for a moment and laughed, obedience is a better way of showing respect than outward reverence. Both of them began to play chess upon reaching the stone table in the garden and when they were playing, they also casually chatted. Xin Wan was surprised to discover that not only Chang Zai King was superior in chess, when she was talking to him, she knew about astronomy, geography and there was no subjects that she did not dabble in. Moreover, she has a long-term perspective and could even talk a little about matters of court. Xin Wan was one who appreciate talented people and paid less attention to the beauty of a female, and only favored Chen Rikayu in the inner courtyard because Chen Rikayu was skilled in the four scholarly arts, and was an out-and-out -out talent. But the only one thing bad about Chen Rikayu was that because she was from a scholarly lineage, she would occasionally put up on airs and thought herself as high and pure. It was interesting if it was once or twice but for one who lived every day, one would inevitable feel that Chen Rikayu was too small-minded, and unduly worried over minor matters. Chang Zai King was however very different. Both were very talented females but Chang Zai King did not have the arrogance of a big family and was candid. She was exquisite in her candidness and was very considerate. When chatting with her, it was full of humor and wit and made one's mind calm. Unconsciously Shen Wan's gaze at Chang Zai King became admiration and they hang out with one another longer. Zhao Mama looked from afar and a trace of happiness appeared in her eyes. However, she quietly instructed the maids at the courtyard door to guard carefully, 
and not let others come in. It was the case at this end and within the imperial palace of Ming Chi. It was also an exceptionally lively day today. In order for the crown prince to welcome the guests from the Ken country and the great Liang, he specially held a banquet. The crown prince of the Ken country and Princess Ming and were present, and Prince Ruai of the great Liang also accepted the invitation and the nine princes of Ming Chi accompanied at well. Currently the crown prince's medical condition had gotten more serious, and this was an unchanging fact. Because of that, Prince Chu and Prince Zhuan, who were following the crown prince, had their morale shaken. For these two years, the crown prince's influence was gradually replaced by other princes. Almost everyone had tacitly consent to this fact that the position of the crown prince, would not be sat for much too long. The crown prince himself most probably also realized this so in the two years, he was generally less involved in government affairs, not because he did not want to participate but there were just too little supporters. On retrospect, two other factions, the entourage of Prince Zhu and Prince Jing, along Prince Li's, had grown more prominent. Prince Li had been a smiling tiger and fond everyone, Thus he had many supporters. Prince Zhao and brother relied on their consort mother, consort Zhu Xian. These two factions were now fighting like fire and water, and there was a number of times when the map was unrolled and the dagger was revealed. The most steady one was actually Prince Ding, Fu Zayu Yi. Prince Ding was also involved in the matter of the court in these two years, but the matters in which he was involved were relatively easy and seemed to deliberately show that he had no ambition at all. As it was all small matters, Emperor Wen Hua was extremely satisfied with him, and also because of his neutrality and peacefulness, he was not suppressed by the crown prince, Prince Zhao or Prince Li. On the contrary Prince Ding was the safest one. In the hall, the crown prince smiled and lifted his cup with a smile, everyone came here from afar so one should celebrate. Huang Fu Hao sat below the crown prince and raised his cup to him, many thanks to the crown prince's hospitality. Princess Ming and was sitting beside Huang Fu Hao, and after being confined by him for a few days, Princess Ming and was finally let out. She had especially dressed up today, and was making eyes at the purple clad youth sitting across her. Unfortunately while the dropping flowers pined for love, the heartless brook babbled on unrequited love. Prince Ru'ai's face was half covered by a mask, and his eyes did not look over to her end. However, he also did not look at the crown prince at all, and just stared at the wine cup. No one knew what he was thinking. The crown prince asked with a laugh, Why is Prince Ru'ai not drinking? Is it that the wine is not of one's taste? Prince Ru'ai's lips hooked up, not feeling well thus not drinking. This was slapping one's face without hiding at all. Even though this Prince Ru'ai's actions after he had come to Ming Chi were always mysterious, and no one could tell what attitude he had for Ming Chi, but his etiquette was exceptional. Today, everyone present could not help but have a thought pop into their minds, that the Prince Ru'ai of the Great Liang seemed to be a little annoyed. Everything was perfectly fine so who provoked him? The crown prince looked somewhat awkward so Fu Zayu Yi said, In this case, your highness Prince Ru'ai can drink tea as a replacement for wine. Someone come and serve tea to Prince Ru'ai. Fu Zayu Yi spoke and continued the crown prince's conversation. Thus the crown prince's expression was much better and was a bit grateful with Fu Zayu Yi. The rest of the princes also agreed with Fu Zayu Yi's words. Even though Prince Ru'ai's background was not small, but no one was willing to be submissive in front of other countries. Fu Zayu Yi's words were firm yet not rude, and took into consideration the reputation of Ming Chi. Huang Fu Hao looked probingly at Prince Ru'ai. But Princess Ming and was looking somewhat worried at Prince Ru'ai and said, Does Prince Ru'ai not feel right? Is there a need to call the imperial physician to take a look? When Huang Fu Hao heard this, his expression got heavier and he fiercely glared at Princess Ming and it was alright if Princess Ming and was too arrogant and willful on normal days, but to be so lovesick in front of so many princes in Ming Chi, this was letting others watch a joke. Huang Fu Hao was a male and males were the clearest at how other males think. The gaze that Prince Ru'ai used to look at Princess Ming and was clearly of somewhat impatience. It was alright if this Prince Ru'ai was one who was magnanimous, 
But if Prince Rui really had a bad temper and got fed up with Princess Ming'an, he would also not have good feelings for the entire Qin country, and the person who would be in a loss was him. Prince Rui did not heed her words at all, but instead looked at the person sitting right at the back across him. Everyone noticed his gaze and looked towards the direction and saw that it was Prince Ding. Fu Ziyu Yi Fu Ziyu Yi was the prince that knew his place and behaved himself among the nine princes, but at the moment Prince Rui was only looking at him, so the gaze of the few other princes also somewhat changed. Fu Ziyu Yi was calm and did not seem to panic because of Prince Rui was directly looking at him. Prince Rui suddenly laughed and said, before coming to Ming Chi, one had heard that the ninth prince was a young and handsome youth and now when one see, it is truly a deserved reputation. One do not know if there is already a marriage. Everyone did not expect that Prince Rui would suddenly say such things, and their expression became weird. Fu Ziyu Yi was stunned for a moment before replying, Not yet. Prince Shu laughed out loud. He sat beside Fu Ziyu Yi and took the opportunity to pat Fu Ziyu Yi's shoulder. Our number nine is the only one without a consort among us brothers. Why? Is Prince Rui also interested in number nine's marriage? The lips under Prince Rui's mask hooked up as he leisurely said, There are many age-appropriate princesses in the Great Liang's palace. When this prince saw the ninth prince, one felt as though one had met a kindred spirit, and is determined to promote a marriage alliance. When the words were spoken, Everyone present changed their expressions. The meaning of Prince Rui's words were actually wishing to be in-laws with Fu Ziyu Yi. If it was really as what Prince Rui said and he married a great Liang's princess, it would not only mean that he has the backing of a consort but also the great Liang. If one had a moderate attitude towards Fu Ziyu Yi, it was because Fu Ziyu Yi had never shown any interest in the imperial throne but with Prince Rui's words. It made everyone else unable to look at Fu Ziyu Yi like before. This was because once Fu Ziyu Yi marries a great Liang's princess, he would become the most powerful contender of the imperial throne. Fu Ziyu Yi's hands that were holding the wine cup, suddenly tightened as he quietly looked at Prince Rui. Was it truly like what was superficially said? that he wanted a great Liang's princess to be married to him. Fu Ziyu Yi did not think so. Prince Rui was not helping, but harming him. Fu Ziyu Yi had always upheld the idea of keeping a low profile, and not show his cards until the last moment. Even though Prince Rui's conditions were extremely attractive, if it was really out of good intentions, Fu Ziyu Yi would not be unwilling. But this was brought up in front of all the princes. It was just one sentence and all of the princes' eyes were up on guard, and almost pushed him to the point where the wind and waves were the fiercest. No matter how moved he was by it, it was impossible to agree. Fu Ziyu Yi clenched his teeth. He did not know the reason but he actually felt that this Prince Rui, that he had never met before, seemed to be brimming with hostility against him else he would not have casually said such words and put him in such a difficult position. He started to be vigilant against Prince Rui in his heart but on surface he smiled, many thanks for Prince Rui's generous favor. It is just that at present this one does not have any thoughts of marrying a wife. Oh! A smile hooked up on Prince Rui's lips, does the ninth prince admire a female? Thus unwilling, this prince will never break up a pair of lovebirds and if it is really so, one would not pressure. Your Highness is joking. Fu Ziyu Yi cupped his hands together, it is just that one does not have such intentions yet. Seeing Fu Ziyu Yi rejecting Prince Rui's offer neatly, the expression on every prince's then became better. But after the experience just now, they no longer feel as rest assured as previous with Fu Ziyu Yi. Today Fu Ziyu Yi had rejected but who can guarantee that he would change his mind about the imperial throne? It was after all the biggest temptation. All nine of them wanted to gamble as such. How would a saint appear in the imperial family? This is strange. Prince Rui seemed to be very interested in Fu Ziyu Yi, and did not let him go even after Fu Ziyu Yi rejected his proposal. He smiled but was not a smile. The ninth prince have yet to marry and have did not admire anyone, so why not consider the matter? This prince see that the ninth prince is an outstanding talent. Could it be that there are no young ladies that admire you? When those words were said, 
The slightly rough and boorish Prince Chen laughed out loud, Your Highness Prince Ruai is not aware of it, but originally in our Mingqi there is a young lady that love our number 9 till the entire court was aware of it. Is it Shen Miao? Not waiting for Prince Chen to finish, Princess Ming and interrupted his words in a rush. Princess Ming and had heard about the rumors on Shen Miao, and initially laughed a lot about it. So the princess also knew about it. Prince Chen was somewhat surprised. The entire kin country know the matter about Shen Miao loving His Highness Prince Ding. It is not considered to be something bizarre. Princess Ming and said, rejoicing in another's misfortune. As long it was a matter that could let Shen Miao be shamed, she would always be willing to take part. Correct. Prince Chen laughed, Your Highness Prince Ru I may not know, but this Shen Miao is the daughter of the formidable great general, and was the one who competed with her Princess Highness on the tribute banquet. He then sighed and said, One believed that at the beginning Shen Miao was still young, and would keep on thinking of ways all day to look for number 9, and she did not know what was shame undirectly spoke to number 9 about her love for him. She even did needlework, making pastries, learning to play the kin and write poetry for number 9. Gee, she really had done a lot of things. Even though Prince Chen said that but his words were actually a malicious insult, as if he was watching a joke. However on the day of the tribute banquet, she had some gracefulness. The one talking was Huang Fu Hao. It was two different things to hear from rumors and to hear it from an insider. Huang Fu Hao was inevitably somewhat surprised, as how Shen Miao had presented herself during the tribute banquet and in the Ken's residence was not one who would accept a compromise. Doing needlework and making pastries, Huang Fu Hao thought about the time when Shen Miao was dealing coldly with Princess Ming An, he felt very bizarre. He joked, the ninth prince really have a heart of steel. At that time, that Shen young lady was young. Prince Chen continued speaking, who knew that after two years she would become so beautiful. Moreover, now one is unable to see anyone but of the originally stupid and cowardly demeanor, or even her past image. Among all the young ladies in this Ming Chi's Ding capital, there are not many who is more outstanding than her. Prince Chen smiled, if one had the foresight, number 9 would not need to be so merciless at the beginning and let down a beauty. One has to know that it is too late for regrets now. Princess Ming and sneered. This Shen young lady is also a marvelous person. She is a female but do not know a little shame at all, and directly chase like this. It is really hard on her to do needlework, making pastries and following around. Really very considerate. Knowing that Princess Ming and was dealt by Shen Miao during the tribute banquet, one knew that she was not happy with Shen Miao. So all the princes only smiled and did not speak. It was Fu Ziyu Yi who lightly shook his head and said, Shen young lady is a good person. May everyone not use her as a joke as it would be a sin to destroy her reputation, and neither anyone could afford to take responsibility. Number 9, you are just too serious. Prince Chu laughed, you do not want others, and could it be that you do not allow others to have? If we did not have established our consorts, I am willing to marry Shen young lady. Exactly. The princes continuously echoed, indeed is like this. Huang Fu Hao laughed, if I was the ninth prince, I will also certainly marry her. Princess Ming and was extremely annoyed. She looked towards Prince Ru Ai and discovered that Prince Ru Ai was not joking around with others, but was quiet and her heart became happy as she asked, does Prince Ru Ai also think so? Prince Ru Ai paused. Everyone eyes looked towards him. The young man wearing a mask picked up the wine cup to play and said lightly, doing needlework making pastries, learning to play the kin and write poetry for a man. Princess Ming and said, correct, practically offending social decency and expose one to ridicule. Such a good young lady. Prince Ru I smiled, as luck would have it, this prince also want. 